Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to use an iPad or different tablet for a home assistant dashboard. And in a future video, we'll be taking a look at utilizing a different method to do the same thing using a couple of add-ons for a more customized dashboard. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, if you check out my affiliate links, you can buy some of the gadgets that you've seen me review in my previous videos, and it helps support the channel as well. There's some other methods to support the channel, such as signing up for NordVPN using my affiliate link down below, or contributing through my Buy Me A Coffee link which also helps to support the channel. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So why would we want to add an iPad dashboard to our Home Assistant setup? Well, it's a pretty simple way to give us physical control over our smart home. Now I've done videos in the past about using remotes to replace light switches because having physical controls can definitely help you out with accessibility and also end user acceptance. While it might be cool being able to turn your lights on and off from your mobile phone, it's not exactly convenient having to pull your phone out of your pocket every time you walk into or out of a room. And it's also not intuitive if you have guests over. Those guests are not gonna have Home Assistant on their device, and even if they do, they're not gonna have access to your instance of Home Assistant. So having physical controls like a light switch or a wall panel controller, like what we're going to set up in this video, can make a huge difference to the usability of your smart home. On top of that, it's a great way to provide us with some visual feedback about the things that are happening both in and outside of our home. For example, we can look at weather data, camera feeds, and sensor states like temperature, humidity, or even our solar generation. So now that we know why we want a control panel, let's take a look at getting one set up. Now I'm going to go over setting up a custom Lovelace dashboard in Home Assistant, but in a future video, we'll create custom dashboards using other methods. Now I'm going to be using my Daily Driver iPad Pro here uh, to set this up, and I've already got the Home Assistant app installed on here. That said, you can do this for any tablet device that is going to run the Home Assistant application. So uh, that can be an Android tablet or it can be an iPad like I've got here. And it doesn't need to be a 12.9 inch. It can be any size you like. So what we're going to do is in our Home Assistant instance here, I'm going to head over to settings and I'm going to go to dashboards and in dashboards, I'm going to add a new dashboard. Inside the add new dashboard screen, I'm going to give this a title. I'm going to call it wall panel. And I'm going to grab an icon here and I'm going to use, uh, I'm just gonna type in panel and I'm just gonna use this uh, alarm panel outline. So I've set the icon to MDI alarm panel outline and the URL is wall panel, I don't need to change that. I'm going to leave the admin only switch to off and the show in sidebar switch to on and we'll tap create. Now that we've created the wall panel controller, we'll see that over in the sidebar here. So I can click on that and straight away, it's got everything showing up here. And that's obviously not a great experience because if we go over to the iPad and open that up on the Home Assistant app, we'll see that that's actually pretty cluttered. So uh, there's quite a lot going on there and that's not really going to be a good experience on the iPad having to scroll to find anything that we're looking for. So what I'm going to do is click on the three dot stack in the top right hand corner and then I'm going to click on edit dashboard. I'm going to flick the switch to start with an empty dashboard and I'm going to tap 
take control and we've now got a blank dashboard. So I'm gonna add some cards in here. I'm gonna start with a, an alarm panel because uh, I think that's something that we might wanna have on our dashboard. Uh, and we'll put arm home, arm away. And we'll put arm night in there as well. I'll tap save. Uh, and I'll add, I'm going to add a button and I'm going to make that button trigger the hallway, the hallway lights. So that's a light group. I'll save that. I'm going to add a picture glance card. I'm going to use my front door medium camera and I'll set that to a live view. And uh, we will add some entities on here. I'll add the porch light and I'm going to add the outside temperature and I'll add the, I'll add the outside humidity as well. So we've got the outside temperature, outside humidity and control over the porch light from this picture glance card. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more stuff and I'll speed this section up so you don't have to watch me do all of these individually. And uh, when we come back, we will have a new dashboard to explore. So I'll go through that now. Okay, so I've put together a dashboard here and uh, we've got a couple of things in here. We've got our alarm panel, uh, we've got a thermostat uh, controller for the bedroom air conditioner, we've got a button for our hallway lights, we've also got a button for the garage door, uh, we've got a couple of gauges to show us our current energy balance and the amount of energy our solar panels are producing. Uh, and uh, we've got some door sensor statuses to see all the doors uh, closed. And we've also got some weather data in here. So we can move these around and look, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not a huge fan of the way this works uh, to move cards around inside Home Assistant dashboards. I, I think it, it could bear to be a little bit nicer. Um, and I might modify these gauges a little bit. I might create a new card uh, and I'll make a vertical stack card to keep those two together um, just to make that nicer. So I'll just do that quickly. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Uh, let's just expand our sidebar here a little bit to see what it looks like in three columns. And that's still okay. Collapse the sidebar down so that we've got four columns and we'll pop over to the iPad and see how that works. So uh, I think that's gonna be best in four columns. Uh, you know, we've got the minimum amount of scrolling. We can see all the information in one go. Uh, we can uh, type in our codes. We can interact with our accessories here. Uh, we can see the information that we need. The only thing I might consider doing is possibly making the camera feed a little bit larger. I think that would be better if that was uh, maybe uh, two columns width, uh, and I'm not 100% sure how to do that yet with Lovelace dashboards, but uh, there is a way to do that in another method, which uh, we'll show you in a different video. But as you can see, we can interact with all the accessories that we need, and we've got plenty of information heads up there. So now what we need to do 
is make sure that this comes up as our default dashboard. So what we'll do is we'll go into the settings down here, we'll go to dashboards and we'll tap on wall panel and we'll tap set as default on this device. And you'll see in the top left hand corner that it has changed the default icon to the wall panel. And so now if I close the Home Assistant app and reopen it, it will relaunch to the default dashboard, which is our controller here. And uh, now what we could do is mount this in an enclosure on the wall somewhere, and we would have a really nice dashboard. Now it's worth mentioning that setting up this dashboard is very much a choose your own adventure. Use what works for you, not necessarily what I have here. Now what you might want to do if you're mounting this on the wall so that you don't have guests or kids backing out of the app, for example, or changing things that you don't necessarily want them to change, what you can do here, and this is specific to an iPad, is we can open up the settings app and uh, if we scroll down the left hand side in settings, we can go to accessibility and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go to guided access and I'm going to turn on guided access and I'm going to tap on passcode settings here. I'm going to turn on Touch ID and set a guided access passcode and I'm just gonna set this up. So now that I've set that guided access passcode, what I can do is I can back out to the main screen and I'm going to open up the Home Assistant app and I'm going to triple tap the home button. Because this is an older iPad, it still has the home button. If you're on a newer iPad, it would be triple tap the sleep wake button. So one, two, three, and we get this guided access menu here. And what we can do is we can kind of draw shapes on the screen here. And I'm just drawing a rectangle so that I can drag the corners and just dragging these corners so that we cover the whole sidebar of the Home Assistant app there. Because what I wanna do, you'll see at the bottom it says circle areas on the screen you would like to disable. So what I wanna do here is stop touch working in any of these areas. So that grayed out area down the left hand side, that sidebar, you're not gonna be able to interact with that while this is mounted on the wall. And what we're also going to do when we tap start, so now that guided access is started, I can't tap any of the items in the left hand side here, but I can still interact with the accessories that are not blocked out there. And the other thing that I can't do is hit the home button once to back out to the home screen and you see guided access is enabled. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could triple tap and it's going to ask me for my passcode here. Uh, and I'll enter that. And once I've entered that passcode, we get back to this guided access setup screen and we can either end guided access and that will allow us to use the iPad as normal. Uh, and if we were going to do that to change into a different app, then that would work. Uh, but now when we triple tap the home screen, it immediately starts guided access in the same setup that we had previously. So I can open and close the garage door. I can turn on or off the hallway lights and I can see the status of my doors, the energy, etc. Now guided access obviously only works on an iPad and it works with any app on the iPad. It doesn't necessarily have to be the uh, Home Assistant app. There are apps that will allow you to do a similar function on Android, uh, but I don't have an Android tablet, uh, nor do I know what those apps are. Uh, so I may need to look at that separately. One of the best tips for setting up a dashboard like this is to have it open on your tablet while you're editing it on your laptop so that you can quickly refresh and see how it looks on the tablet. To be perfectly honest with you, trying to edit dashboards on a tablet is not a great experience. It's still not even a great experience on uh, a laptop. So that's setting up a tablet as a dashboard for your Home Assistant instance. Now, as I said, in a future video, we're going to take a look at another method of setting up a dashboard for a touch surface using an add-on called App Daemon. 
Let me know in the comment section down below how you would use a tablet dashboard like this or if this is something that interests you. Also, while you're at it, let me know other home automation ideas you'd like to see me cover in future videos. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, now is a great time to consider changing that. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get notified when I release new videos each week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there's a number of ways that you can do that in the video description down below. The first is to sign up to NordVPN using my affiliate link down below. I chose to partner with NordVPN because they have the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I've seen, and they have apps for both mobile and desktop and servers all over the planet. So no matter what platform you're using or where you're using it from, you can protect your personal information while you browse the web. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up to NordVPN. There's also a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions made through my buy me a coffee link are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.